So since I last spoke with you, there's been a bit of a kerfuffle on YouTube. And normally I try to keep quiet about things when people try to promote themselves, because I do. I, I think if you look at my subscriber number, you think, well, you don't need any help. And I agree with you. You should see how many I've, I've lost in the last two years. But um, due to my lack of production over the last 16 to almost 22, 23, 24 months now, uh, I'm in danger of losing whatever the shit it is that's coming along with the monetization thing. If, if you know me, uh, I don't make money from the videos that I do. I, I mean, I do a lot of copywritten stuff. Q song playing under me right now here. <clears throat> so I don't know, I don't know if it's just the monetization or the benefits that come with that that I might be in danger of. I listen, if, if I only lose monetization, I'm not that bothered by it to be completely frank. I don't make much money from the YouTube videos. Like I said, um, I don't go out of my way to avoid putting copywritten stuff and it gets claimed and then whoever is the owner of that material makes the money from my videos. But um, I do want to be able to schedule my videos. I do want to be able to have lengthy videos. I do want to be able to stream uh, the once, two, three, four times a month I do. So if you enjoy my content and if, if you enjoyed my content when it was being well produced, I, I, I don't know, I'm, I, I know when I'm bad, the last year plus has been pretty bad, but when I try, I, I'm, I'm better than some people. I'll, I'll say that at the very least. I'm not the worst YouTuber when I try. So if, if you enjoy my stuff, uh, I need a little bit of help. I need watch time. I don't need subscribers so much, but if, if you haven't subscribe, subscribe, subscribed, that's the word, why is that so hard? If you haven't subscribed and, and you enjoy, by all means, that's my nuts vibrating, by the way. And of course, if you are one of my patrons, thank you very much once again. Um, I, I'm gonna try to rehaul that this year as well. Uh, I'm taking taking suggestions. What, what do you want as benefits? So yeah, if, if you enjoy me, uh, I need a little bit of help. If, if you don't wanna help, that's fine. I, 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 I don't, I, again, I don't know how much danger I'm in. Um, if it's just losing ads, I, I'm fine with that. <laughs> uh, again, go watch some of my more produced stuff, well-produced, uh, highly polished, I guess is what I would call it. Uh, there's copywritten stuff all over that. It's, I'm not making money off those videos, so uh, I don't mind. I, I mind about the, the length, the being able to schedule, the, the stream time. Uh, I, this is the part where I'd be, you know, saying go subscribe to Brian Lomax, go subscribe to Emily. Uh, I should probably say her first, right? You blew it! Uh, yeah, but those people need help. Um, but in this instance, not due to subscriber number, but due to uh, the hours, I'm in trouble. I appreciate the support in any way, shape, or form. On to the list. Kong Skull Island, um, or if you're a fan of Drum Dums and watched us on Scream Stream. Island was fun. Kong Skull Island? What'd you say? Um. <laughs> <laughs> like you Which said, version are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of stuff you watching? <laughs> Kong Skull Island, Triple X. <laughs> I really dug the way they set up the time period with, with the, I mean, insert three traditional Vietnam songs that are in every Vietnam movie here. But uh, Samuel J. I I mean, it's it's a movie about a giant monkey uh, trying to defend its, its island. Uh, and if you don't know that going in and you're expecting some sort of Oscar-worthy performances, you're, what are you doing? This is kind of what I expect from something like that, Samuel L. Jackson. Um, although, if, if I have a gripe, PG-13, and you're casting Samuel L. Jackson. Ugh. Ugh. Um, me as a stand-up, I don't do kids' parties, and that's for a reason. 
Um, Samuel L. Jackson needs to say fuck at least twice. At least twice. So that, that if, if I have one gripe about Kung Skull Island, it's Kung Skull. See, now I'm saying it like Lee. <clears throat> Kong Skull Island. Uh, it's, it's the fact that Samuel L. Jackson just was leashed with his language. Another movie that a lot of people sang its praise and I didn't watch until well after all of that praise. Good movie. I probably would have enjoyed it a bit more if I like just discovered it. Although, you know, double standards. How, how would I discover it without hearing about it? It kind of, in, in a faint sense, this movie reminded me of the John Carpenter Masters of Horror episode, Cigarette Burns, faintly. Only faintly so. But um, other than that, it's, it's a Netflix movie, which is, which is something like this. I really enjoy watching it at home because uh, even with all the, the hype that I, I had surrounding it, it was easy to ingest and not uh, put too much pressure. You're not, you're not going out to see it. Um, yeah, it, it was good. It was good. Not, not, oh my God, guys, this is incredible. Silence of the Lambs is nothing compared to this. It's not that. I, I had a good time with it. Can you tell that I have the fatigue yet? <clears throat> um, this is a movie that maybe five years ago would be in my top 10, but I, I, I just can't, I can't continue caring about these, these series of films. Um, it, it's a good movie. I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's a good time. It's, it's a little, a little on the, uh, no, 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 I don't want to say childish. It's, it's, it's geared more towards a younger audience, I would say, but, <clears throat> I'm just, I'm just spent. I, I'm just so spent uh, enough already with, with these every two months. Um, it really, when, when things are really great, it, it kind of feels watered down. Like it, it's paint by numbers, which, which this movie, it, 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 it's, it's perfectly good. Michael Keaton, brilliant, brilliant in this movie. Uh, I just, I just am tired. I'm tired. I don't know why I watched it. It was good. It was really good. It, it should be higher. Five years ago, it'd be way higher. But if, if I was, if I'm being a complete CP stick in the mud, uh, I'm perhaps lower. To be honest with you, I'd rather watch The Mummy again than Spider-Man Homecoming. I said it. Yeah, this is a, a typical movie snob horror movie it's 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 a horror but it's 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 way subdued i mean there's 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 one scene in the film where they kind of uh show a ghost where i wish they didn't uh, it's it's a movie where if you're going to do one or the other do it or don't it's a little half and half because at the end there's a little i don't want to say ambigu ambiguity but um she can see a ghost at one point, and the, the big thing about this movie is she's, she's trying to make contact with somebody. But if she can see one, then why not all? Uh, that, that's the only gripe. Otherwise, this would be way higher on my list. Um, again, we're, 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 we're in the 30s, and I think this is a either three and a half or four star movie to me on Letterboxd. So uh, from here out, I, I quite enjoyed these movies. So. That's saying something about the movies I watched in 2017. So I was debating whether or not putting this on the list because it's 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 not it's not technically a film you can go pay for. It's it's a film that was released in 2017. It's a film that is available freely on YouTube. Uh, it's a fan film. Uh, anybody who knows enough about me, Friday the 13th fan, uh, and wow. This, this fan film is better than half, half the series. Um, and then there's some fan service at the end where, where there's, there's an actor in this film that is the equivalent of giving me head as far as cinema is concerned. So um, this, this might be a CP exclusive, you know, this could be 
this, you know what, if I'm being honest, it could be way higher on my list, but um, because it's less than an hour, um, and because it's, you know, it, it's not, I, it, it, I find words, I can't find words. Um, it, this guy, Vincent DeSanti, I think is his name, needs to be contacted by Warner and either ha ha throw him some money and then throw more onto this movie or let him direct the next Friday the 13th because nobody, Warner, Paramount, they don't know what they're doing. Um, this guy gets it. It's a pretty looking movie. Uh, $17,000 budget and it looks incredible, especially for $17,000. Um, so, so to, to put the one gripe I have with it in the beginning, it felt a little gimmicky, but that's, that's budget speaking. If there's one guy in the movie and it's a little Blair Witchy, but again, when you don't have money, you do the most with what you do. And this guy, uh, it, it's really disappointing watching something like Never Hike Alone and, and what, what is done with that budget. And then you see stuff like, I don't know, anything that I've listed before this movie. And they're just, uh, you know, paying producers to sit on the sidelines. <clears throat> uh, I, again, d d don't don't take my rating so high. I'm a big Friday the 13th fan. As far as fans of the series are concerned, you should definitely check it out. Um, if you're not a fan of Friday the 13th, if you're not a horror fan, uh, don't take this rating too much. If you're a horror fan, it could be way higher. Um, what, what I said about Tom Cruise before, I'll just say it again. Tom Cruise, you could put Tom Cruise in, in Schindler's List and I'm going to smile. I, I, I don't know what it is. <clears throat> but, um, okay, movie. I see that I, I want to say that the story that this is based on has something to do with um, a documentary that's been done before about a guy who was going back and forth, you know, playing both ends of the drug cartel game. Uh, interesting story. Again, Tom Cruise kind of brings up the charisma, just just like I said about Bruce Willis. Even Bruce Willis not trying. Tom Cruise is, you know, got a little bit of swagger to him. And, uh, you know, if somebody else is in this movie, I, I don't think as highly of it, possibly. The Mark Wahlberg playing real people in movies directed by, oh, fuck, what's your name? Peter Berg. Uh, they're starting to get the hang of it and they're getting better and better at it. The best looking Peter Berg does realistic people doing things starring Mark Wahlberg movie yet. I don't know if you know the whole story, but it's, it's interesting to see the, the whole, uh, the whole story covered. And I, and I quite enjoyed that. I was entertained by it. Um, Denzel Washington playing a quirky guy. Uh, I don't know if, if it's if it's if he had autism or Asperger's in the film or he was just quirky. Um, but another another guy. You want to talk about actors that that are carrying movies? Denzel Washington in a in a pretty pedestrian movie. Otherwise, is really performing his dick off here. If you have the, I mean, at this point, I don't think it's in theaters anymore. If you have the chance to watch it at home, it's probably a better experience than I did. I saw it in the theater and, and uh, it, it seemed to lose its legs a little bit towards the end, but it, Denzel is just, just awesome in this movie. Just awesome. Man, if Shia LaBeouf was, was made to play a character, it's, it's John McEnroe. Kind of a shame that it, it's, it's mostly Borg's story. Um, and uh, it would have been neat to see a little, bit, a little bit more of John McEnroe and or Shia LaBeouf because he's doing such a good job. But um, two, two tennis movies about the, the, the same period came out within a couple months of each other. Really strange how Hollywood does that. Nothing is impossible. Uh, just uh, if you don't know anything about the story, perhaps you may not be interested and or invested, but I had a faint idea of what, what the deal was. Uh, yeah, if you're a sports fan, definitely check it out. Uh, gripe, quick gripe early. Um, if those four people are heroin addicts, 
and we catch up with them 20 years later, one of them is going to be dead. Sorry. That's, that's just the law of science, numbers, whatever. Um, the first one's really gritty, and this one really isn't, but that's not taking away from the movie. It's, it's, it's a nice commentary on modern uh, culture. Uh, so it, don't don't go into it thinking oh it's it's going to be a, a legit sequel to Train Spotting. It, it's more of a here's these people in this universe in today's day and age, and it's done quite well. Really, really, really good movie. Um, I'm not so gaga about the ending and the the like. It's it seems it, it seems to me that a lot of people have gone ape shit because of one little thing at the end of the movie. <clears throat> that doesn't make it that much better for me. It's neat, don't get me wrong, it, it's nice. The movie's really good. Um, I think people gassed it up a bit because of a little connection. Other than that, really great performances by James McAvoy um, and What's Her Tits from The Witch. Shit, forgot her name. Really well-made movie, really pretty, really colorful, really funny. I'm tired. It looked gorgeous. Um, I don't know if, again, five years ago, this could be a lot higher on my list, but uh, it was nice to look at at the very least. You know, there's that. I'm, I'm, I refuse to talk about superhero movies at length in this damn thing. Uh, La La Land. Listen, for this to be this high on my list, it's saying something because I can't stand musicals. I can't stand musicals. Moulin Rouge is something that I don't want to like, but I do. And uh, this reminds me of that to a certain degree. Gorgeous looking movie. Um, I chuckled at times. At times I, I kind of sighed. I, I don't understand the logistics of a musical. I don't understand, like, it, it takes me out of a story when somebody starts singing their lines. So uh, it's just not me, but I, I could recognize this is a really well-made movie and it's not like I was bored. I get bored with stuff like um, Chicago, believe it or not. I, I really do, I, I, I can't sit through Chicago. Anna Kendrick could be like the modern day Sandra Bullock as far as really funny actress that can kind of do a bunch of different things. She's quite funny in this movie and and helped by a cast that uh, Stephen Merchant is just unsung in this film. Really good time. It takes place over the course of a day at a wedding. Um, and I actually didn't see some of the things that were coming. It, it's, it's, it's a comedy. It's a comedy, co dramedy. Yeah, it's, it's mostly comedy with, with a little dramatic element thrown in towards the second, third act, which I didn't see some of it coming, and that was kind of surprising. I, I, was, I was pleasantly surprised, as you can see how high it is. Uh, Redneck Ocean's Eleven. Uh, pr pr funny performances galore if you're not named Seth MacFarlane. And that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate because I, I quite enjoy Seth MacFarlane. It just felt like he was a little too much in this film. Uh, Daniel Craig, hysterical. Adam Driver, hysterical. Channing Tatum, uh, kind of reserved in this movie. But yeah, if, if you wanted to see some sort of Ocean's Eleven type film in a Southern fried environment, then run. Run and go watch Logan Lucky. Um, if you liked Fifth Element, but don't like charismatic leads, may I present Valerian? Um, quite an enjoyable movie if it weren't for the leads. Um, I have yet to see Cara Delevingne in a, in a role where I've just been wowed, and that, that continues. Dane DeHaan, not so much. He's not Bruce Willis. Um, but Rihanna, Rihanna certainly was a, a pleasant surprise for a, a myriad of reasons in this film. The film's gorgeous. At, at the very least, it's, it's an expensive, no, a cheap, a cheap fish tank. I was going to say it's an expensive fish tank, but $20, you put it on your TV and just look at the colors. It's, it's a gorgeously made movie. 
um, just uh, could be way higher on my list, just weighed down by some of the lack of charisma, lack of me not giving a shit about the lead. But otherwise, it's 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 a perfect parallel to Fifth Element, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, if if you want the store brand version. The founder, man, Michael Keaton, this year playing dudes that you just kind of wince at. Uh, the founder, is, it was early on in 2017. I, I don't know if it was a 2016 movie for America, but I, I remember it was pretty early in Denmark. Another movie that perhaps if, if somebody else was in it, I wouldn't think so highly of it, but Michael Keaton's just so, you really don't like him in this movie and, and it, it grows. He actually loses you as a character, which is which is quite impressive, and that's uh, that's the founder. Another movie that's that's high on the list due to me, and that's Goon: Last of the Enforcers. Big time hockey guy. Um, I played quite a bit. Uh, there's there's a bunch of things that if you're not a hockey fan, you're not going to understand some of the things in this film. But there's a scene in the movie where uh, one of the bad guys steps on the logo in the carpet and that's that's a big no-no in hockey culture and if you're just watching this just as a film you're not going to get just what that symbolism is so to hockey fans this is this is a really good movie one of the best since goon uh and since Slapshot. it's been a very long time since hockey's had a a decent movie and now we now we have a sequel to a really decent film and it was quite good for for me um, could be a little bit higher, very flashy looking action movie, um, been done before. Uh, John Wick, if John Wick didn't exist, perhaps I could have this in the top 20, but really gorgeous looking, really flashy. Uh, we've seen it before. That's, that's, that's really it. Keanu, uh, he, he can play a badass when he keeps his mouth shut, oddly enough. It's, it's, it's quite strange. I am an FBI agent! And lastly, but not leastly, on this set of movies, Lego Batman, um, really fun. If, if they could just start making comic book movies like this, maybe I'll stick around for a little bit. Um, having fun with, with a couple of genres, and re a really heartwarming story there in the, in the in the middle with, with Batman and Robin, uh, I actually like it better than the Lego movie, which is saying something, because that's that's quite a good movie. But yeah, that that that's that's that. 21 Lego Batman movie. And that does it for this portion of the list. <clears throat> Up next we'll have 2211. And uh, yeah, so Otherwise, that's, uh, that, that's, that's really it. Um, do all the things that I would ask you to. If, if you enjoy this, uh, show your support however you'd like. I'll live no matter what. Well, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll get struck by lightning. But otherwise, um, if I don't get struck by lightning, expect 20 to 11 sometime in the next week. And uh, have a day. The setting the, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? Expectations play a lot into, into how I perceive a movie. Oh, that's my nuts again. Uh, <coughs> oh, I'm dying, I'm dying. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe.